Hello grade 11 math class, welcome back to another lecture. Today we're going to talk about confidence intervals, that's the title of the uh, lesson, but we also are going to include margin of error and confidence levels. So confidence intervals and confidence levels are different things. Uh, this is kind of different from what we've been uh, building up to with the Z scores. Uh, this is a different way to talk about data, um, one that you'll probably hear um, more so in news articles, or you'll read in news articles. Anyway, uh, we can see we've got definitions. I'll try to make them as straightforward as possible. Um, the margin of error is essentially um, how much you think you might be off by. So you'll say, like, I think that the value for this set of data has an average of 55, um, plus or minus, you know, let's say 5. So the margin of error would be five. It's the possible difference between um, what you are trying to say and what you are unsure of, like what it might be. Um, and a confidence interval then uses that margin of error to give an interval distance. So if we said 55 plus or minus five for a margin of error, our confidence interval would be between 50 and 60, plus five and minus five from 55. And a confidence level is unrelated, but has to do with sample size. Essentially, um, it is the likelihood that the population that you're trying to study is the same as the sample that you just studied. So usually, people want to have a 19 out of 20 uh, confidence uh, level, or 95% confidence, sometimes 99% is required. Uh, but we're going to talk about those as well. Essentially, we're going to... Um, kind of look at some data, write some stuff down from that data, and um, I'm sure the definitions will make more sense as we go forward. So let's go. A telephone survey of 600 randomly selected people was conducted in an urban area in a city. The survey determined that 76% of people from 18 to 34 years of age have a social networking account. The results are accurate within plus or minus 4 percent points 19 times out of 20. Um, essentially what we're going to do is we're going to talk about margin of error, confidence interval, um, and confidence level throughout here. So in this um, survey we have a sample size n of 600. So usually we say our sample size n is 600 or is denoted by n. And it said that 76% of people had a social networking account, plus or minus 4%. So this right here is our margin of error. Our margin of error is 4%. And we just got that straight from the question. We had 76% average, um, and we have a margin of error of 4% which means that we can, con we can determine our confidence interval. Our confidence interval is using our margin of error and our mean to determine the range at which we would expect to be correct. So 72%, so 76 minus four, and then 76 plus four is 80%. So this is our confidence interval, 72 to 80%. So the mean was 76, or what we expected was 76, and we have a margin of error of four, so our confidence interval is 72 to 80. And what is our uh, confidence level then? Our confidence level has to do with uh, how many times we would expect to be right out of uh, how many tries. So our confidence level, we said was 19 out of 20. And if you were to divide that and multiply by 100 to get a percentage, we would find that that's 95%. Essentially what we're saying here is 95 times out of 100, we would expect 72 to 80% of people to have a social networking account. So 95 times out of 100, we would expect between 72 and 80% of people asked to have a social networking account. 
you can now see that 95% right or confidence still leaves a 5% chance that the people that you sample uh, would be outside that range or that your range is not necessarily completely correct. Your margin of error could be wrong. So usually there's a 5% chance and although it doesn't sound like a lot when you are doing many, many surveys, some of them are bound to be incorrect. So, um, let's see, the range of people then. So we would be able to say that 72% uh, uh, of um, 600, so we'll change that to a decimal. So 0.72% of 600, and I actually haven't done this myself. So let's do this. 0.72 times 600 gets us 432 people. And then 80% or 0.8 multiplied by 600 people. So 80%, which is 0.8 multiplied by 600, gets us 480. So that means that we would expect 95% uh, of the time, between 432 and 480 people, would have social networking count. And that's hard to read, but oh well. You know what I'm trying to say. And we have that with 95% accuracy. 95% of the time we would expect to be correct. Let's go down to ooh, politics. So this is some data from an election a long time ago. So don't worry about it anymore. Uh, we have a couple of different organizations, Echos, Nanos, and Ipsos. Don't ask me what those stand for. Um, they asked for people's political views in November, and here we have percentages. So 29% of people said they would vote conservative in this poll, 29 liberal, 19% uh, NDP, 9% Quebec, 11% Green Party, and 12% undecided. In Nanos, you can see it's quite different, 37%. Uh, conservative 32 liberal 15 NDP 11 Quebecois 5 green and a 19.2 percent undecided section so it feels like quite a few and then Ipsos which has a little bit of both of those it might be even more extreme in this uh, case so uh, what is the difference and what are we trying to look at here so a how does the sample size um, how does the sample size used in the poll affect the margin of error uh, that's what we are going to focus on first, the margin of error. So you can see that, I'll just call this E, Echos, has a margin of error of plus or minus 2.3%. And we have Ipsos with plus or minus 3.1%. And Nanos, I did it out of order, I apologize, but that's the way it goes of 3.4%. And they have a sample size for Echos of 1815, and Ipsos it is 1000, and Nanos 844. So you can see you have a smaller margin of error when you have a larger sample size. Margin of error and sample size. Um, this is the middle one. It's uh, quite a bit larger margin of error and then quite a bit smaller sample size, only slightly larger margin of error, only slightly less sample size. So sample size has a very big difference, very big effect on the margin of error. If you were to continue on in stats, uh, you mm, would be able to find out how to calculate this margin of error specifically. Essentially, larger sample size decreases the margin of error. more accurate which makes sense as you ask more people you're gonna get a more accurate view of what's actually going on and B the confidence interval does it affect the confidence interval well you have a larger margin of error 
you're going to have a larger confidence uh, interval. And that shows that you have less confidence in what you're trying to show. So Nanos was 37. We're just using conservatives. Yes, we're using conservative values. And then we're checking the margin of error. So plus or minus 3.4. So that means that we have a range of 33.6 to 40.4%. So our range here is 6.8, which is kind of big. We have, because it could be as low as 31 or 30, it could be as low as 30 or as high as 44. Um, not really sure, It's that's a big range. We have Ipsos at 35 plus or minus 3.1. So that's 31.9 minus, or sorry, to 31.8%. So that's a range here of 6.2, slightly better. And then we have uh, Echos, which in this case is the gold standard for whatever reason, 29 plus or minus 2.3, which would give us a range of 26.7% to 31.3%, a range of 4.2, which again, definitely better, definitely lower, we're more certain about where, um, uh, where the value actually lies. So sample size increases, confidence intervals go down. All right, let's look at some baseballs. Are you excited? All right, baseballs have a mean of 145 grams and are unacceptable if they're lower than 142 or greater than 149. To determine if the machine should be calibrated, they take a sample to determine the mean. If it's below 144.7 or above 145.3, then it needs to be calibrated. And they refer to the following table when working with quality, quality control. We're gonna come back to this table. We're going to talk about A, what is the confidence interval and margin of error the engineer is, is, I guess I can make another change on the fly, is using for quality control tests. Okay, so we have a mean of 145. And we know that we recalibrate the machine if it's below 144.7 or 140, above 145.3. So 144.7. 145.3. Essentially, I can see that that is, sorry, cross that out, 145, that's 0.3 this way, and positive 0.3 this way. So our margin of error in our tests is plus or minus 0 0.3, 0 0.3 grams. And our confidence interval is 144.7 to 145.3. That's where we'll be okay with our values landing. If it lands in 144.8, we're good with it. Anything outside of that for an average, uh, we need to recalibrate the machine. So B asks us to interpret the table. So essentially, if we want to be confident that 99 out of 100 times the mean mass of, of the random sample of baseballs is between our confidence interval, it means we have to take a sample of 110. And it, with Major League Baseball balls, they would probably want to be 99% confident that the balls are within that range. So uh, the sample size that would be needed to be 99% confident is 110. The sample size that you need to be to take to be 95% confident is 65. And to be 90% confident, or nine times out of 10, it would be 45. So to be confident that 99 times out of 100, the mean mass is between 144.7 and 145.3 grams. We need to have a sample. The sample should be 
So I'm going to abbreviate this here. I'm going to comment. N should equal 110. Oh no, I wrote 100. N should equal 110. Essentially, they need to take and measure 110 baseballs, find the average to be between 144.7, 145.3. They can be 99% confident that that is the correct answer. Essentially, what is the relation, or sorry, question, what is the relationship between confidence level and sample size? I think it's pretty straightforward so far. As the sample size increases, the confidence uh, level increases. So, as sample size increases, the confidence level increases and again there's a process for how you figure out what the sample size you would need to get a particular range um, that is university statistics all right let's go one more uh, you're gonna do your turn but I don't have that so you can try that I'm gonna move on to this one my bad don't worry about it all right, so example four, we're going to analyze this um, position about voting for Smith or for Jones. Some very, very distinctive names here. Let's go. So we have a poll that indicated that 53% would vote for Smith and 47% would vote for Jones if the election uh, were today. Um, they were stated to be accurate within 3.8 percentage points 19 times out of 20. Who's going to win? Who will win? Oh, the almighty question. So we have Jones here. Jones has 47% uh, support, plus or minus 3.8%, which gives us a confidence interval of 43.2% to 50.8%. Okay, so our confidence interval is right there. And for Smith, we have 53% support, plus or minus 3.8, according to the poll, which gives us a sample range, or sorry, a, a range, a confidence interval of 49.2% to 56.8%. So we can see that we actually have an overlap. There is a 1.6 percentage overlap between 50.8 and 42.9. So there's a 1.6% overlap. So even if the polls are accurate 95% uh, of the time, like it says, ninth, uh, it says that we have a 95% confidence interval in this situation, uh, even if uh, everything is correct, there's still a chance that um, Jones wins and the polls could not be considered correct. People would call them incorrect, but you wouldn't be able to consider them incorrect because they have confidence intervals and there's some overlap here. So even if the polls are accurate, uh, Smith is more likely to win, but Jones has a chance. So if the polls are accurate, Smith is more likely to win but Jones could. But Jones does have a chance. Uh, there is a your turn next that I have. So pause it here and give a little explanation and come back and then I'll tell you. So is it possible that Smith could receive more than 56.8% of the votes? So um, we had our range for Smith was 49.2% to 56.8%. And it's asking, is it possible for it to be greater than 56.8%? Is that possible? And the answer is yes, it's possible. Because our poll said it was said to be confident 95% uh, of the time. So yes, it's possible as the confidence level 
was 95%. That's a 5% chance. There's a 1 in 20 chance that it's wrong. So absolutely, uh, Smith could get more than that. Um, according to the poll, it's not as likely, but it's absolutely possible. You guys got some work to do. Uh, thanks so much for watching, everyone. I will see you soon.